Hey all, this is my next review. It's review-ish, more let's play-ish sort of thing. I'm unsure what to call it, but anyway, we're going to be playing Star Fox 64, which was an amazing game back in the day. I remember actually playing the demo of it in Toys R Us or something. Anyway, here we go. So this is the training sequence, that's what I meant. This is what I played at Toys R Us or wherever I was back in the day, and I remember it just being awesome. Just lots of fun. And this game was a lot better, of course, than its predecessor for the Super Nintendo Entertainment System, or SNES. And of course, that's because it was 16-bit, and this is 64. So this isn't really that sophisticated a game. Essentially, it's a lot of A, you can hold A to charge your laser, you can also lock on to enemies this way, all sorts of stuff. And staying true to the original, you can take different routes, which was really the appeal for me to this game because I like the different tasks in games. I'm not a fan of just like purely, well, I mean, I am a fan of linear ones, but that was part of the thing with 64 was to break the linear ones. Like Super Mario 64, you didn't have to beat every single level like you did in the other Super Mario games, which was really cool. And um, this, like its predecessor, was multi-leveled and has different difficulties and there's different ways to get to the different levels. So here I just kind of pick my favorite courses and I'm gonna try to get the most people down, the most enemies down and make some records here so we'll see what happens. So part of the reason why I fell in love with this game is because it's not as hard as some of the other games out there. It was challenging, but it wasn't so challenging that I wanted to walk away. There were many games before this, especially on Nintendo, the NES, the original Nintendo Entertainment System, that were just a bit hard, and um, yeah, just the American... Since I'm an American, we're not really into losing and all the really, really hard stuff that the Japanese like. So, yeah. <laughs> I had some trouble with video games when I was a kid. Mario 3, I think, was the most forgiving for me, and it was kind of like a middle ground. Uh, I was really good at the duck hunt thing, but that's because it involved shooting, and I'm good at shooting sports. Now, when I played this game, I played this game in my childhood, Star Fox 64, but in my adulthood, I tried the SNES version, and I just wasn't that big of a fan. There was, of course, a vast visual improvement from the original Star Fox. But overall, I think they changed some of the stuff for the better. Some of the enemies got changed, and the bosses pretty much remained the same, which was kind of cool. So it was refined 
similar to the way that they refined Ocarina of Time for the 3DS. Here I believe I got a medal because I got over 150 kills. It varies from place to place, but yeah, here you go. So on my other game, I have everything unlocked because back in the day, on my other cartridge of this, I mean, because back in the day, I used a Game Shark to get all of the medals on every level, which is definitely, that's a challenge. I don't think I've ever done it, and I've played this game so much. Sometimes I have surprised myself getting medals, not thinking I would get one. But yeah, it's a fun challenge, and we are now going on the quote-unquote hard route. But I'm sure I'm going to weave in and out from medium and easy as well. Okay, so here we are. Space is the place. So now we're out in space, and I'm showing you the cockpit view. I do not understand why anyone would really like the cockpit view, other than that it's cool first person, I guess. But you lose a lot of your visuals on it, and I don't know, it's really easy to screw up on this, especially when you're doing a barrel roll. <laughs> because your perspective changes with the barrel roll, which gets a little nuts. <laughs> so it's just easier to steer and aim and all that jazz in the third person, which I'm sure is why they have that all range mode with some of the bosses. It's nice when the final enemy activates a pickup of some kind, because that's generally the last of that particular bunch of enemies. Whoops. As you can see, I've decided to go back to the third person view, because it's just easier, kids. But here's some of the rolling. <laughs> yeah. Crazy. This, I thought, was a particularly hard task to knock them all down with one shot unless they mean to use a bomb. I don't know, but I try to use bombs wisely, son. So here I'm just, you know, shooting up enemies, the usual. 
Oh, I hate it when I miss a bomb. I despise that. Recently, I haven't been playing this game as much, and I chalk it up to my overplaying it. I used to particularly like to listen to Pink Floyd's Dark Side of the Moon while playing this game. I have no claims about it syncing up, but sometimes there would be naked ninjas on my lawn. No, um, it was just fun because they're two things that I love, and you could fit the play in a spin of that record. So that was cool, and I enjoyed it. So here the map to the bottom right plays a little bit more of a major role because you have an enemy that legit moves around. He's not just sitting there opening this so you can conveniently take him down. But this is legit and I think it's basically practice for the dog fights to come. Back in 6th or 7th grade, I had a friend who was all excited about this game, and this was back when the Rumble Pack was introduced, but when they got around to the Rumble Pack thing, this was definitely a great add-on, and it was a lot of fun. I think it was actually the first time that a controller would react to something you did, and um... As cool as it is, though, I have to say as an adult, I am so sick of buying batteries for those things. They drain a lot, and especially here on Star Fox 64, they, you know, it's like everything you do basically triggers some vibration of some kind, even though some of them are less apparent than others. But yeah, that was a great add-on and my friend was talking left and right about this game so I had to buy it once I wound up you know playing it in Toys R Us and all that jazz it was a done deal it was so old son let's see if I got the medal I really hope somewhere there's a ROM hack that has snappy quips back at Falco. I would love that. I just despise Falco in this game. Oy. See if I got the medal? No, I guess I didn't. Oh well. C'est la vie. I have to admit it was a little bit hard to pick just one course, so... Uh, I tried to get the best of both worlds, if you will. Katina is battling the enemy. Will you help him out? Affirmative, General. Hang on, guys. Help is on the way. This has to be my favorite level because there's just so many enemies to deal with. It's a lot of fun to try and get Bill to congratulate you on your piloting because if you shoot down 10 of the enemy within a certain amount of time, he'll say you're a good pilot or something. Like, you become a great pilot or I don't know, something like that. I don't believe I succeed in doing that though because he won't say that if you take down, I think, three of his own allied ships. Go find your own target. 
So needless to say, it is apparent that some crazy ship dog fighting begins, and it's a whole lot of fun. It's better when you have more bombs than I do right now. I think I will get sent one later. But yeah, I try to save my bombs for stuff like this, for levels like this, where you just have to take out a gajillion of the enemy. Your usual sci-fi UFO thing going on here goes over a building, threatens stuff, the usual. There, I took out one of Bill's allies, so, you know, he holds that against me. Something I love to do in these levels is shoot down the other pilot's targets, so, you know, Peppy will be like, Oh, I'm gonna take you down, rah, rah, and then I just jump in and take out their targets at the last minute. Here I'm legit trying not to hit allied aircraft, but it's hard to do in this. Thankfully, they don't count as negative hits because that would be very annoying and would get very old very fast. This is one of those times in video games where they create a sense of urgency that you don't really need to worry about, especially if, well, not especially, but just period if you're going for the metal on this level, you know, so you just have to milk that clock for all it's worth. Otherwise you won't get a chance to get, I think you have to get 250 enemies on this level. That's a lot, even with all these guys coming at you. I am a big fan of the little scheduled pickups, so when you reach a certain checkpoint in this, I'm assuming it's amount of enemies down or something, Rob64 will send you, in this case it's a bomb, and again I really should have come into this with more bombs, but I guess I wasted them all. Yeah, 
It's some sort of energy reaction. The door has appeared. Stand by you and die. I remember as a kid at this point I was like, did it freeze? Did it freeze? And then the image came back and I was like, oh, praise the Lord. Despite this being my favorite level, I guess I didn't get the medal because the thing wasn't orange. I could be wrong, let's see. Oh, whew, I did. Again, I'm laboring over which path to take. The other path to do, that easy one, is fun too, but I went for this. The majority of this level is cool, I just don't like the slow beginning at this one. There are a couple others I think that have basically starts where it's just mostly dodges. And here comes Bill. So as I said, I haven't played this in quite a while, but I feel like there's another path that I can take. Like if I shoot at the lava in a certain spot, some good things will happen. Alas, I don't try that here. But yeah, I need to go on the internet and look that one up because I just cannot remember for the life of me. The enemy's bio weapon? 
Takes one to no one there, Falco. You know, sometimes I just wanted to aim for Peppy's head, but maybe that's just me. Freaking Falco always with the obvious. So, a lot of these levels were pretty easy. This one was psychologically hard. You kind of forget that they're throwing you health left and right. Why I didn't do a somersault there, I don't know. But basically, if you just remember that, even this boss spits rocks at you and you can collect the uh, silver rings. So, you know, it's not really that hard of a level, but with the with the health going down periodically and all that jazz, it's psychologically hard. And I remember as a kid, this one I think was the hardest for me. Not even the uh, the last one on hard mode with the floating brain. <laughs> Wow, that's nuts. I don't remember that typically happening. I don't remember Falco being that low on health. Wow. That's, that's crazy. So basically, if I got a medal here, did I? I did. So it was lucky that I did that. <laughs> I almost didn't get that medal because you need the whole squad, including freaking Slippy, to survive everything. Right off the bat, I have to say, this is one of my least favorite levels. Anything involving the tanks. <laughs> um, I think if you take the easy path, you don't have to play in a tank. I could be wrong. There's one path, I think. Maybe it's the middle. I don't know. But I think you could get away with not playing in a tank. Anyway, I decided to play this level because, you know, I wanted to bitch about something. I love the majority of this game, so there's got to be something I can complain about. The idea of this level was cool, though. You have a moving target, and um, although this level is rather violent compared to others, it's relatively forgiving. And it's fun to control the tank. It's a cool concept, but if you can't skip it, if you can't do something else, it just gets annoying after a while. So all in all, I wasn't a big fan of this level. It's not terrible at all, but since it's something that you're basically forced to play, I wasn't a fan. I wish you at least had some kind of a vehicle option, maybe, you know, uh, so be able to be a plane. But I also enjoyed the submarine level. I know you couldn't put this underwater, but maybe make an alternate level for the submarine. I just was not a fan of the tank levels <laughs> at all.
So I don't know if you guys are noticing this, but sometimes I just use the missile thing even without the lock. If you're shooting at something big, it's helpful. And sometimes I use the bombs on the bosses, and I don't know, I haven't really... I don't really keep that much track of the health bar to know this, but they it feels like they don't really make that big, that much of a difference when you're fighting a boss. Um, or maybe it's just certain bosses. I don't know. Yeah, this guy invariably scoops you up just at the right time, and I think I just squeak by here. Yeah, in another second, I would have been toast. You don't die in this level if you don't do what I just did, but you have to actually fight the boss. No, Well, that's good. At least Falco got some health there. I don't know if you guys noticed the giant gap <laughs> between dialogue there. I guess they just had a boatload of animation and couldn't think of anything to say, which happens from time to time. There we see Great Fox. That thing is pretty cool looking. Okay, so I didn't want to waste time because the harder levels are hard. It may take me a couple playthroughs. So I decided to just use the easy level out. So we're going to play this one, which is fun. If you destroy the satellite, I'm on it. Okay, guys, destroy all barriers. So even though the game calls this level easy, it's not easy. Really, in the end, to me, what it means is it leads to the easy boss, you know? There's no middle boss in this game, or final boss, 
rather. And, you know, I don't know if that's because of memory issues, because the ROM cards, I think, or the game board held something like 64 megabytes or something, something ridiculous like that. Um, so I don't know if they were limited. So they decided, well, we're, we're going to make the end boss either really hard or, or easy, you know. But it was definitely forgiving of them because at the end of it, you could go through the hard route and at the end you could just pick the easy route, which was nice. And that's what was forgiving about this game. You had the freedom to go to different areas and, you know, if you got sick of one version of play, you could go on to the other. So on the level line that I've chosen to follow here, this is the first time we run into this crew, but I could have run into them before if I was on the easy mode, but I skipped some of the levels and opted for others. So yeah, this, that's why this is the first time we're seeing them. And the dog fighting is fun. I enjoy it. I wish there was more of it. Maybe substitute um, some of the tank levels. So this level isn't that easy if you're trying to protect all of your team. Sometimes it can be hard, especially on the expert mode version of this game, uh, it can be hard to protect all your allies, and sometimes you may accidentally hit them. You know, friendly fire is thin. So, yeah, hopefully I get the medal. I don't know. We will see. So I always take out one or two of those targets on the core because their hit point value, I believe, goes down. So I think it's 10 initially, and then if you wait too long, it turns into 5, which ain't good. But still, it's fun to take these other guys down, and as you can see, I'm just trying to rack up kills for the metal, and I believe it's 150. Let's see. Yep, there you go. So. I have enough kills to have gotten the medal. So thankfully, although Slippy is always in trouble, these guys are bad shots. <laughs> So you can afford to ignore it sometimes, at least on the easy level. In the expert mode, forget about it. This level is a boatload of fun because it's all action-packed and you can choose certain paths in it and mess around and it's also a boatload of fun just to try and get as many enemies down as you can and get a medal and all and it is relatively easy for what it is. On the expert mode, if you just knock a wing once on something, kiss that wing goodbye. So <laughs> this, this level is incredibly hard in expert mode, but in the normal play, it's great. I'll take the left. I've got the 
So I opt to go with Falco because it's more fun and as you know, I enjoy annoying him and trying to take out his targets. As you can see, this is definitely a level worthy of being the pre-final boss level. It's challenging, but as with most of the levels here, it's easy to get through in certain ways too. So, you know, I mean, it's, it's, it's workable. It's not something where you have to play again and again and again to get the hang of it. And that was what was so awesome about this game as a whole. So this boss, again, relatively easy, I think, in preparation for the final boss coming up. So this little transitional part here only exists so you can get some pickups and some more hits. I frankly do not know how the hit points work with these two levels. Um, it looks like they're combined, so I'm assuming that you need to have at least 150 hit points to get um, a medal for this level. I'm sure I've achieved it at some point in my life, but as I said, this is a different copy this is not my childhood copy, which I do have, but it's at my studio, not at my home. Uh, but yeah, so nothing crazy here. We're just basically going around getting some freebies, uh, both hits and pickups. And now it's time to deal with Andros. What you're witnessing is the easy boss. There's an easy boss and an expert boss, shall we say. And decided I didn't want you guys to have to watch me play the expert boss because it takes me a while. So, yep, that's why I went for this one.
Okay, I'll admit it. You did good, Fox. Ready to go. It's time for us to go now. 